So what do you do and how do you control estrogen on TRT? Well, here's where I'm gonna tell you the best method that I've found in order to have you feeling as good as possible if you are on TRT or you're natural and just wanting to look to control your E2 levels. Hey guys, so something really interesting about the men I work with across the world who are on TRT is how they control their E2 levels and how much their estrogen has an impact on how they actually feel. So in this video, I'm going to discuss estrogen and a strategic approach to dialing in your E2 levels if you're not feeling great. I can't tell you how many emails I get from guys across the world saying that once their E2 levels are cleaned up and dealt with properly, they feel so much better, often without changing their TRT dose at all, but just by manipulating and getting their E2 levels into check. So if you are experiencing some of the same symptoms or your E2 levels are out of range or out of whack on your blood work, keep tuned in this video as I'll be discussing some of the symptoms and then how to actually clean these levels up if you are on TRT. So estrogen has a huge role in male sexual desire. Actually studying how a certain hormone influences brain chemistry and functioning and behavior can be quite daunting as there are so many complicated systems going on. However, studies from the early 1970s and 80s have time and time again shown that the male preoptic area, the POA and the anterior hypothalamus are key regions of the brain implicated in sexual desire and libido in rodents, damage to the medial POA area in the brain pretty much abolished their sex drive completely. But why does this matter? Well, both of these regions have very, very high concentrations of estrogen receptors and mice that are mutant for the aromatase enzyme, meaning they can't produce any estrogen at all, show a profound decrease in sexual behavior and aggression. As you can see in these images, aromatase expression, which is the blue staining of areas of the brain that are really critical for human arousal, libido, aggression, and behavior, it's actually quite strong and there's quite quite a lot of aromatase expression and aromatase activity or estrogenic activity in these areas of your brain that are involved in sexual desire, libido and aggression and behavior in terms of sexuality and things like that. Now, what's really interesting is that androgen receptor knockout mice who don't possess androgen receptors at all, treatment with estrogen rescued their sexual desire and libido and their sexual behavior. So basically estrogen made them have that sexual desire again and DHT, which doesn't aromatize to estrogen at all had no similar effect on rescuing sexual behavior. As you can see in this image, E2 administration in the L negative slash Y androgen receptor knockout mutation mice restored some sexual behavior, whereas DHT did nothing at all, as I've highlighted. So really the research backs up that estrogen seems to have a critical role in male sexual behavior and sex drive at a brain level. And this is why so many of my guys with E2 levels too high or too low seem to have significantly reduced sexual functioning and come to me saying, I don't have any sex drive, even though I'm on TRT, what's wrong with me? And the research really shows a dual effect. And just quickly before I go into it, I do seem to see two groups, which is the anti-AI group, which is that you should just let your E2 level float to whatever it wants on TRT, no matter how high it gets. And then the pro-AI group, and these people advocate for keeping your E2 under control with an AI, no matter what. But sometimes they crush their E2 levels too hard using an AI. We know that estrogen also doesn't just have brain effects, but has effects of your actual erection quality itself estrogen induces VEGF, which is a potent vasodilator. When estrogen is too high, it can actually reduce erection quality because VEGF is too high, meaning that you're actually getting some venous leakage out of where the blood should be in your erection. And in fact, in this study, the only difference in men with and without ED erection dysfunction was that the men who had ED had vastly increased estrogen levels. Estrogen receptors are found extensively in the vasculature of our penis. And so basically ensuring that these estrogen receptors are not too saturated or not undersaturated seems to be key and modulation of E2 is going to be how you get the most out of your TRT in terms of feeling better and often a lot of guys who start TRT it's for the sexual and the libido benefits so you want to make sure if you're not feeling great you know that you fix it because otherwise what is the point of being on TRT not only this but estrogen also has a significant negative feedback loop into the HPT axis some people think it's just testosterone that can shut your natural production down but E2 estrogen has a big impact as well and increased estrogen levels can absolutely shut down your LH and FSH signaling 
Some of my guys who haven't wanted to start TRT but have been overweight, we know that adipose tissue contains a lot of aromatized enzyme and they have E2 levels that are quite high naturally. Just reducing their body fat and cutting out some of that conversion of T to E2 has significantly boosted their T because they're not getting the same negative feedback and that's without even touching any anabolic steroids or any TRT at all. And I'll never forget the story of one client who I'm going to name John, obviously not his real name, but he came to me with terrible circulating total testosterone levels of 97 nanograms per deciliter, very low at 8 a.m. in the morning, and it was severely affecting his cognition, energy, sex, and life. He was carrying excessive body fat, and he did have E2 levels at two and a half times the reference range. So through an extensive dietary intervention, we reduced his body fat percent from around 38 or 40 percent to back down to about 15 or 16 percent. And his latest blood test just a few months ago from 97 nanograms per deciliter, it was 650 nanograms per deciliter naturally. And his estrogen had also come down to just above the reference range, well down from the two and a half times reference range that he did previously have. And there was no other intervention apart from him losing weight and cutting down some of that aromatized enzyme expression and activity, and it significantly improved his life. So my point here is if you let your E2 float to whatever it wants on say like 200 milligrams of TRT a week, which actually isn't true TRT, but some guys are prescribed 200 milligrams a week, it's gonna cause issues if you just let it float high and you're having significant symptoms like reduced erection quality, reduced libido, an inability or lack of desire to have sexual intercourse. Estrogen also has complex interactions with dopamine and serotonin in the brain. And in the research, there are positive correlations between estrogen and serotonin binding, basically meaning the more estrogen, the more binding. And studies have shown that high levels of serotonin binding in the brain can reduce sexual desire. High levels of serotonin in the brain, like what SSRIs achieve, typically do lead to lower sexual desire, and estrogen can do this when it's very high. This study showed that administration of estrogen desensitized serotonin receptors and increased serotonin concentrations in the synaptic cleft, again leading to reduced sexual desire. So estrogen at high levels can absolutely shut down your sexual desire. And I know for myself, when I've let my E2 float very, very high, I basically had no interest in sexual intercourse or any sexual behavior at all. But then you get guys who crush their E2 level completely with an AI, and this causes issues too. In men with low testosterone and therefore low conversion of T to estrogen, administration of exogenous estrogen has been shown to increase libido and in this study, eliminating estrogen and increasing the T to E ratio too much reduced sex drive significantly. So there's also evidence that whilst too high it can cause issues, areas of the brain involved in sexual behavior do need a minimum level of estrogen in order to function properly. And you can lose sex drive if you crush your E2 completely and just have T as the dominant factor in the ratio of T to E2. So what do you do and how do you control estrogen on TRT? Well, here's where I'm gonna tell you the best method that I've found in order to have you feeling as good as possible if you are on TRT or you're natural and just wanting to look to control your E2 level. So if you are on TRT, the best option I would say is to keep your E2 levels within a narrow range. Studies have shown that estrogen levels less than five nanograms per deciliter or 50 picograms per mil are correlated to a decrease in libido. However, through experience, I can find this too aggressive. So I would suggest anywhere from 40 to 65 picograms per mil blood serum concentrations of E2 as a rough guide for an optimal window. And if you want a calculator, because the units can be different in different countries, depending on where you get your blood test done, I'm gonna include a calculator in the bottom description of this video. You should obviously speak to your doctor. This is very individual. Where one man might feel good at 40 picograms per mil, someone might feel terrible. So it is going to be a bit of an experiment to see where you feel the best. But I do find in general, in my own experience, 40 to about 65 picograms per mil seems to be the optimal window for your E2 levels. So how do you get there? So optimizing your TRT includes having a structured program and a smart way to approach it. I recommend you only use natural aromatase inhibitors if your E2 is only slightly high and you do have high E2 symptoms. Compounds like resveratrol, grapeseed extract, curcumin, and some other flavonoids are candidates here for reducing your E2 levels. And if that fails, something like a very, very small dose, like one eighth of an AI per week may be an option here just to get that needle moving. If you also have a high body fat percentage, reducing that will reduce the expression and activity of your aromatase enzyme. We know, like I said, it's found very highly prevalent in fat or adipose tissue. So getting rid of some of that 
will reduce your conversion of testosterone to E2. And that can be done through obviously dietary intervention. And then in terms of low estrogen, if you're struggling with that, this would be remedied usually by a proper TRT protocol in any case. If not, I'd be looking at the dose volume and the frequency of injection. And apart from that, if someone still wasn't responding and had low E2, which would be quite rare, I'd be looking then at a mutation in the CYP19A1 gene, which can lead to aromatase deficiency. However, this is so rare that it's probably not even worth mentioning. It's just just something I wanted to include in the video just in case. And so to conclude, E2 seems to do the best in a narrow window. Too high will cause issues, too low will cause issues. So keeping your E2 level in like an optimal reference range window is going to probably be the best option for you if you're natural or if you're on TRT or if you're taking a steroid cycle. And just through my own experience, we have big problems with sexual desire, mood, and cognition issues that can be often attributed to TRT. So I have men mention in the emails, you know, I'm on TRT and I just think it's the testosterone causing these issues and all my sexual issues and my cognition and my functioning and my desire, energy issues. But the T level is 800 nanograms per deciliter. So how can it be that? In most cases, it's actually not. It's actually that the E2 level may be out of range and having an optimized T to E2 ratio is actually quite important and often overlooked in most guys doing their blood work. And this is why it's so important to work with a practitioner who knows what they're talking about in terms of their blood work and can actually help you find these issues because just looking at the testosterone number is often not enough if the symptoms are there. I hope this video gives you something to think about guys. If you do have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out. More than happy to help any of you or look at your blood work. I will see all you guys in the next video.